Katharine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy's love story is one of Hollywood's most iconic yet unconventional romances. They first met on the set of Woman of the Year in 1941, and their chemistry was instant and electric. Although Tracy was married, they began a relationship that would last 26 years until Tracy's death in 1967. Their partnership, both on and off screen, produced nine memorable films, including such classics as Adam's Rib and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Throughout their relationship, they never lived together or married, as Tracy, a devout Catholic, remained married to his wife, Louise. Hepburn, known for her fierce independence, seemed content with this arrangement. Their love endured despite challenges, including Tracy's struggles with alcoholism and declining health. In Tracy's final years, as his health deteriorated from heart disease and diabetes, Hepburn put her career on hold to care for him. She was by his side when he made his last film, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, often arriving on set before him to make sure everything was perfect. Tracy died just 17 days after the movie was completed. Hepburn's devotion to Tracy continued after his death. She did not attend his funeral out of respect for his family, but continued to speak of him with great affection. The love story of Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward is one of Hollywood's most enduring romances, spanning five decades. They first met in 1953 while working on Broadway, but their relationship really blossomed when they reunited on the set of The Long Hot Summer in 1957. Although Newman was married at the time, he couldn't deny his feelings for Woodward. He divorced his first wife, and the couple married in 1958, beginning a partnership that would last 50 years until Newman's death in 2008. Over the course of their careers, they appeared in 16 films together, including The Long Hot Summer and Mr. and Mrs. Bridge. They balanced successful individual careers with a strong family life, raising three daughters, Eleanor, Melissa, and Claire. Their relationship was not without challenges, but they remained committed to each other. Newman once famously quipped about faithfulness. Why go out for hamburgers when you have steak at home? As they aged, their bond only grew stronger. When Newman was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2008, Woodward stood by him and provided unwavering support until his death at the age of 83. Even after Newman's death, Woodward continued to honor their love. Tragically, she was later diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, but their enduring romance remains a beacon of hope and commitment for many. The love story of Patrick Swayze and Lisa Niemi is a testament to enduring commitment and unwavering support. Their journey began in 1970, when 18-year-old Swayze met 14-year-old Niemi at his mother's dance studio in Houston. Their shared passion for dance blossomed into a deep connection that led to their marriage in 1975. Throughout their 34-year marriage, Swayze and Niemi faced many challenges together, including battles with alcohol and the heartbreak of infertility. Despite these obstacles, their bond only grew stronger. They collaborated on several projects, including the film One Last Dance, which Niemi wrote and directed. Their love was put to the ultimate test in January 2008, when Swayze was diagnosed with stage 1V pancreatic cancer. Niemi became his primary caregiver, standing by his side through grueling treatments and continuing to support his career. Even while battling cancer, Swayze starred in the television series The Beast, with Niemi constantly by his side on set. Throughout his 22-month battle, Niemi's devotion never wavered. She helped Swayze write his memoir, The Time of My Life, which was published shortly before his death in September 2009. In his final days, Niemi remained his rock, holding his hand until the end. After Swayze's death, Niemi continued to honor his memory through her advocacy for pancreatic cancer research. Robin Williams and Susan Schneider's love story may have been shorter than some Hollywood romances, 
but it was filled with deep affection and unwavering support. They met in 2007 at an Apple store, where Schneider, a graphic designer, was helping the already famous Williams. Their connection was instant, and they married in 2011 in an intimate ceremony in Napa Valley. Although it was Williams' third marriage, friends noted that Schneider brought a sense of peace and stability to his life. She understood and supported his struggles with depression and addiction, and stood by him in his efforts to maintain sobriety. Their relationship faced its greatest challenge in 2014, when Williams began experiencing severe symptoms that would later be diagnosed as Lewy body dementia. Although the diagnosis came after his death, Schneider noticed changes in his behavior and health and became his staunchest advocate and caregiver. Throughout his illness, Schneider remained devoted, trying to understand and manage his rapidly changing symptoms. She described their last year together as filled with love and laughter, despite the challenges. Even in his final days, Williams continued to express his love for Schneider. Tragically, Williams took his own life in August 2014, leaving Schneider devastated, but determined to understand what had happened to her husband. Alan Rickman and Rima Horton's love story is a testament to enduring commitment and quiet devotion. Their journey began in 1965, when they met as teenagers at Chelsea College of Arts. Despite Rickman's rise to fame as one of Britain's most beloved actors, known for roles in Die Hard and the Harry Potter series, their relationship remained steadfast and refreshingly down-to-earth. For nearly five decades, Rickman and Horton built a life together, eschewing the glitz and glamour of Hollywood for a more grounded existence. Horton, an economist and former Labour Party councillor, was Rickman's rock, providing unwavering support throughout his career. They had lived together since 1977, but only married in 2012 in a private ceremony in New York, a fact that Rickman revealed years later with characteristic understatement. Their commitment was tested in 2015 when Rickman was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. True to their private nature, they kept the diagnosis quiet, with Horton by Rickman's side throughout his treatment. Despite their efforts, Rickman succumbed to the disease in January 2016. In the years since his death, Horton has worked to preserve Rickman's legacy, sharing and helping to publish his personal diaries, giving fans a glimpse into the man behind the roles.